Balco is a sport that revolves around using the body for movement. So the idea being to get from A to B in the most effective way possible, um, just using the human body and interacting with various obstacles involved rather than walking around. I've been doing parkour for about nine and a half years now. Um, I would say it's had quite a big impact on my life, both physically and psychologically. From a physical perspective, I used to be quite an unfit child. I was never really that good at sport and was always picked last in PE. I just kind of accepted that I would be, never be a sporty person. Um, but parkour offered something quite interesting. There wasn't a competitive element to it and there weren't any strict rules, so I was able to progress at my own pace uh, and slowly just develop myself. And within a year of doing parkour, I was the fastest sprinter uh, in my year. From a psychological perspective, it's taught me a lot of values such as hard work, determination and patience. And I've taken that beyond parkour and used that sort of mindset in my education as well. Uh, when I initially said to my friend when I was 14 that I wanted to be a lawyer, he laughed at me and said, isn't that just for smart people? But taking on the mindset I've got from parkour, um, seven years down the line I've finished a law degree and I've secured a traineeship with the sixth largest global law firm in the world. I think parkour is quite easy to pick up. Parkour as a whole is about moving. As we get older, um, we stop climbing walls and walking along rails because we think it's socially unacceptable to do so. Parkour is about remembering and relearning how to do these things. The difficulty in it depends on how much you've forgotten. To me, I feel like parkour is greatly dominated by men. When I went to my first parkour jam, I found that I was the only girl amongst 20 guys, which was very intimidating. The number of girls practicing parkour is beginning to grow though. Although the number of girls who attend jams is still quite low, weekday classes um, are becoming more 50-50 between male and female, which is quite encouraging. I definitely think parkour is becoming a growing sport. Um, you're seeing it more in films and media, such as the James Wan film and more recently the Kingsman film. I've been told that it's the fastest growing sport in the world and that it gets more YouTube views um, than other sports such as BMXing, skateboarding, etc. put together. Um, definitely from my own experience, um, more people know about parkour when I'm training outside, people stop and talk to me about it. Whereas when I first started in 2005, no one really knew what I was doing or I'd heard, I'd heard of parkour. I've not had any major accidents or injuries whilst doing parkour. It's mostly just been cuts and bruises here and there. Uh, when I was a bit younger, I did hit the back of my head um, trying a, a jump and it was caught on camera, but it looked a lot worse than it actually was. Um, people often assume that parkour is quite dangerous and I often get told that I'm going to break my neck. But what people don't see is the hours spent on ground level, so it's actually quite a progressive sport. You train for quite a long time at ground level and then build it up to the slightly more spectacular movements. I think Gordon makes for quite a good parkour teacher. When you're starting out in the sport, you want someone who's um, reliable and patient. Um, reliable so that if you don't quite make a movement, there's someone there to catch you if you're to fall. I think Gordon has these qualities, which is quite important. Um, when I first started parkour, it really amazed me that a simple ob ob object could be used as an obstacle. Uh, my first recollection of trying parkour uh, was at a school lunch break where I was jumping off an empty grit container onto a set of stairs. And it amazed me that the grit container was completely unused and was vandalised, but we were able to use it as a launch pad. And the steps which would usually be used to walk up and down, we were able to use as a landing platform. From then on we just used um, some unused bike rails to practice our vaults and yet again these were unused objects which we made use of. Um, it's given me what some practitioners call parkour vision whereby when we just walk around town or anywhere we see objects and we see lots of potential opportunities. Um, what some people might see as an inconvenience like uh, walking around a rail I see as an opportunity to jump uh, between the rails or walking on the rails to practice balance. Um, staircases, I really enjoy practicing jumps on those, whereas some people would prefer to take a lift. Parkour classes is definitely something that's been expanding over the past few years. Uh, I myself have been involved in a lot of parkour classes over the past two years. Um, the main issue is not um, expanding parkour classes, it's more about getting the right coaches to be qualified. Um, so there's a big initiative at the moment to get more coaches qualified. I think parkour can be done at any age, um, from the young side of the, of the scale. You see kids running around all the time, trying to climb on walls, walk on rails, um, jump between lines, so 
I think the real question for children is when did they stop doing parkour really? Um, and going back to the slightly older scale, um, parkour is more about overcoming personal obstacles. The media depict it as quite dangerous, being big spectacular roof gaps, so you can't imagine old age pensioners doing that kind of thing. But parkour is actually about overcoming personal obstacles and progressing yourself. So an old, old person, as long as they can still move, um, they can practice their own version of parkour. Their goals will be much different to someone who's younger, but they can still take on the values from parkour and still um, use it as a form of physical exercise.